This video is exploring force sensitive resistors, their characteristics, and their interface requirements. I've collected a large variety of these force sensitive resistors, and you can see a few examples here. They can be made into pretty much arbitrary shapes, as you can see some of the weird ones that I've collected. Across the top are some custom shapes meant to measure distributed loads. Most of these other sensors are just commercial sensors, but they all have their own unique characteristics. I've tried them all and made circuits for all of them, but for this project I'm going to stick with just one type. These are FlexiForce sensors from TechScan. They come in various lengths and maximum force capabilities. They also make some oddball and custom shapes. For this project, we would like to translate the applied force into a voltage with a linear relationship between the force and voltage. Unfortunately, the relationship between force and resistance is not linear. Here is my attempt at animating how resistance changes as force is increased. Resistance is high with no load and rapidly decreases as force increases just a little bit. Then resistance only decreases a little bit as force increases a lot. This relationship actually shows that force is proportional to 1 over R. Now 1 over R is actually conductance instead of resistance. So if we plot conductance versus force we should get a fairly straight line. And we do. This gives us a clue how to get a linear relationship between force and voltage. If we think about a classic inverting op-amp circuit, the output is proportional to the ratio of two resistors. If we put our sensor resistance in the denominator position in this equation, the output voltage will be proportional to its conductance. However, we still need to figure out how to get the output voltage to go from 0 to 5 volts. Here is the circuit recommended by TechScan. It is pretty similar to the circuit we just looked at, but note that the sensor is connected to a negative voltage. I don't really want to put in a DC converter, so I'm going to look at a different solution. I'm going to use a two-stage circuit. This is the first stage. It converts the sensor signal into a voltage that is linearly proportional to the force applied to the sensor. The sensor is connected as before to the negative input of the op-amp, except that it is also connected to 5 volts. The positive input of the op-amp is connected to a reference voltage, which is obtained with a voltage divider from 5 volts to ground. So that reference voltage is 2.5 volts. So the op-amp is using negative feedback through R1 to make its negative input equal to its positive input. So the op-amp ensures that V1 is equal to 2.5 volts. And this voltage never changes. So let's look at what happens when we have no load and full load on the sensor. When there's no load, the sensor is at a very high impedance, essentially open circuit. In this case, the op-amp can force its negative input to be 2.5 volts simply by outputting 2.5 volts through R1 back to its input. Of course, this isn't what we want in the end. In the end, we want the output voltage to be 0 volts when there's no load. But that will be done in the next stage. Now at full load, we want the sensor resistor to equal the resistance of R1. So R1 is chosen by measuring the resistance of the sensor at full load. That means the sensor and R1 form a resistor divider between 5 volts and the output of the op-amp. So the op-amp needs to make its output go to 0 volts to ensure that it, its negative input is at 2.5 volts. So at full load, the output goes to 0 volts. Again, this is not what we really want. We want the output to go to 5 volts at full load, but we'll fix that in the next stage. 
This stage is successfully translating a force on the sensor to a linearly proportional voltage. Now, of course, at no load, it's putting out 2.5 volts. And at full load, it's putting out 0 volts. So that's not exactly what we want. And we'll have to fix that coming right up. For the next stage, we're adding three more resistors and another op amp. This stage uses exactly the same reference voltage at 2.5 volts. This op amp is doing the same thing as the first one. It's using its output with negative feedback to make sure that the negative input is sitting at the same reference voltage of 2.5. So most of the nets in this circuit are sitting at 2.5 volts always. Now we have added in an R4 which is going to help us with our offset. But let's look at what happens in our two cases, the no load situation and the full load situation. At no load, we've already proven that the output at V2 is going to be 2.5 volts. And since the stage B here is also keeping its input at 2.5 volts, there is no current flowing through R2 it's actually doing nothing in this uh, instance. So what voltage do we get at the output? Well we have R4 pulling up to 5 volts and we have R3 uh, creating a voltage divider to the output voltage. So since R3 and R4 are the same value the output voltage needs to go to 0 volts to keep the input to the negative input at two and a half volts. So now with no load we have two and a half volts at the output of the first stage but we have zero volts at the output of the second stage which is exactly what we want no load and zero volts. Now let's look at what happens at full load. So at full load we said that the output of V2 is zero volts so we have R2 at 50k pulling down to 0 volts and we have R4 at 100k pulling up to 5 volts. So what does our op amp have to do to make that negative input 2.5 volts? Well, its output has to go to 5 volts. That puts both R4 and R3 in parallel going to 5 volts. So the parallel combination of R3 and R4 is 50k so now we have a pull up of uh, 50k to 5 volts and a pull down of 50k to 0 volts giving us our 2.5 volts on the negative input. So this circuit does what it needs to. At no load it's putting out 0 volts and at full load it's putting out 5 volts and that voltage is linearly proportional to the force applied to the sensor. And of course, I'll have to prove that by building some circuits.